My name is Priscilla Gadega. I am the National Executive Officer at the Kenya Girl Guides Association. Uh, the Kenya Girl Guides Association was registered in Kenya in 1922. And the, the, the main uh, uh, purpose of, of this movement is to develop character uh, of the young girls and women and the, the, because character really is the basis of, of, of leadership. All leaders, successful leaders are people of character and that is what we want to have. It's our dream that any country, any nation, any family, any institution desires to have a leader who has a sound character. So we, we have programs uh, uh, based that are prog programs based on a curriculum that will, has been developed by the World um, Guiding Movement, and we have localized the Kenya one also because we want the, the activities to resonate with the environment these girls live in, and so this this uh, curriculum has, you know. Um, empowers, uh, it really empowers the girls to develop uh, leadership skills, to build their self-confidence, to have skills uh, of advocating and, and you know, voicing uh, issues that concern them. I was born 56 years ago uh, here in, um, in Kiambu County very close to Nairobi. So my, my education, my basic education, primary school I did in Nairobi. And then I went to my high school in Limuru Girls uh, from one to four. From five to six, I went to Mary Hill in Thika. And then I went on to Nairobi University where I graduated with a bachelor's uh, degree in sociology. And later on, many years later, I started working, but after a couple of years, then I did my MBA. So I have also done many other uh, trainings uh, to enhance my career, my, you know, including uh, I've done leadership uh, training at Harvard University. I've also done a couple of corporate governance uh, uh, programs. And um, I started off my career as in the enterprise development. That's where I found myself after college, you know, mobilizing women to form groups, uh, to, to train them how to start a biz small business, how to manage their business, and how to access finance. So I moved on from there to, to an institution that was uh, giving loans and I, I worked as an operations man, manager there. Uh, that was in the early 2000s. But prior to that, I have worked in other institutions, in programs, women uh, co program coordination. I've I was actually the first national United Nations um, volunteer in Kenya. Yeah, you know, United Nations volunteers only used to recruit volunteers from overseas to work in the country, in the, in, you know, in Kenya. For example, in every country, you would, they would not recruit locally, so they brought experts from outside. But when they, they introduced the program for recruiting uh, national experts, I was number one to be recruited. And so I worked for a, U, a UNDP funded program on, on women and self-reliance, which was uh, focusing on, on refugees who live in Nairobi and trying to settle them to find some income generation while their countries are still at war, their husbands are fighting in, in Sudan, in Ethiopia. While they are staying here in Nairobi as refugees, they had to find a means of livelihood. And so I, I, I initiated a project funded uh, by the UNDP and we were working with women who are living in, in Nairobi and Kisumu as refugees. Finding purpose is one of the most difficult things and it takes you many years to actually pin it. Um, over the years, like I've worked now like most 30 years since I graduated, it's going to be 30 years. And I found myself, like I said, by default in entrepreneurship world, which was exciting 
you know, I found like you can actually change somebody's life by just, you know, meet, you know, filling the gaps that they have in their life, whether it is finding an opportunity for training, an opportunity to get some money to start a business, an opportunity just to find the right partner. And so I kind of found passion in, in you know, solving people's problems, those who are having uh, economic challenges. And um, mostly um, I have a bias towards women because women are the ones who have most challenges. Uh, when I started working as a young, as a young girl, I didn't realize that uh, in this country, women did not own properties at then. If you are going to, you know, a woman wants to borrow money, they didn't have a title, they didn't have anything in their name. So we had to go to the husband, you know, to ask the husband to do it on, the, you know, uh, uh, on their behalf. And what would happen if the woman defaults? It would lead to other, you know, uh, negative consequences like a divorce or women getting battered because they have you know exposed the family property and so forth so i found that uh, over the time we we developed mechanisms of lending women money without collateral where they would come in those groups do their savings and then they, they support each other uh, is guaranteeing those loans so i would say that really i have a passion in women empowerment economic social and even uh, spiritual. I am a believer. Uh, I am, uh, for many years, I have been uh, uh, walking, walking the, you know, that path, and I find it is very fulfilling for someone to know that, you know, you know, whatever you plan to do, and you put God in it, He, you know, it, it succeeds in in most cases, and believing that God has good plans for us, and that we can pray and get God open doors and uh, over the years I have been thinking of how can I make myself more useful with the information the knowledge the experiences that I've gathered over the years to make you know younger people's lives more smoother than it has been for me you know when we were growing up we never had things like mentors we were just <laughs> learning from our peers or from the society. We didn't even have really internet where you get information. So it's kind of we were waiting in the darkness, eh? but knowing that you are going somewhere. But now it's, it's much easier because there's a lot of resources accessible. So I was, um, before I, I joined uh, Kenya Girl Guides uh, as now the executive officer, I worked in another organization, where, um, a bigger organization where we were also doing that uh, agriculture development um, and supporting, um, you know, co women and and uh, youths on how to to develop businesses based on commodities that have value, and so they could either be, you know, linked to buyers here in Kenya or buyers outside Kenya. So we were working with the people with export companies. And I, I saw a lot of opportunity that we have a, a good country and if people um, get the right uh, advisory, you know, be at the right places, have the right information and resources, because the resources are there, it's just that there is a disconnect between the people, you know, those who are looking and where the resources are. So I would find myself more useful if I would be placed in a place where I would have an opportunity to mentor girls individually and collectively. I didn't know how I was gonna do that, but I knew ultimately that is my purpose. That is where my passion is, because as a young girl, I would have really appreciated somebody holding my hand, somebody being there for me. And I want to be that to as many girls as I can. I don't have a daughter, I have only two sons. So I delight myself in, in, you know, having all these girls accessible to me. And uh, I was thinking, you know, in, in earlier on, I thought, how am I going to, to make it? You know, before I came here, I used to wonder, how am I going to start my, this program of mentoring girls? How, you know, do I have to, to set up a company? Do I have to probably work with somebody else who has got 
access to these girls. But then, you know, God sent this opportunity, showed up to come and work with the Kenya Girl Guides. And where I, what I like about here is that I can work here. For now, I am working uh, as a full-time employee here. Uh, I'm the head of, of this association. But I, even when I retire, I can still continue uh, working, contributing, supporting the association, mentoring girls, even outside when I'm not an employee. It is for life. We need mentors all throughout our lives, I believe. And um, I've seen significantly that um, they, they are probably, I would have taken a different direction with my life earlier had I, you know, a mentor who would have guided me and telling me this is what, if you go this way, this is where you are likely to go, or you need to have this skill, you know, to, to, to do this kind of thing. You know, you can start early, um, you can shape um, your path, uh, by then we were just looking, you know, where can I get a job, but not very clear why you wanted that job. So uh, I find that even from, for any person, including me, you need that someone who has been there before you, who is going to tell you, you know, why you should choose this path and not that path. Someone who is going to give you some kind of information that will help you to take decisions and the right decisions and also you know when you um, express where you want your 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 destination to be they can also hold your hand and and maybe um, connect you to the right people give you advisory on you know what what you should do to become a successful career woman uh, a successful mother, a successful wife, and a successful member of the community. All this you require a mentor because reading on the internet can be good, you know, has two sides. It can give you all the information which is positive and negative. And to make that decision, you need to be guided by that one person who will be your stronghold. Yeah. Being a woman is not easy, especially in the corporate world. Um, I actually lost two jobs because of sexual harassment, discrimination, undermining, you know, by your superiors. And sometimes you find yourself in a place where you are pushed to a corner because you are not meeting their expectations or their demands in terms of advancements made to you. And you choose to leave the job or you choose to be fired than you know, to have to compromise your values, your principles, and what you stand for, basically. Uh, so I, but whenever that happened to me, I have a conviction that really, I didn't do anything to deserve that. So I will move on. I will soldier on and look for the next opportunity. And all the times I've gone down, I've come up again and come up stronger in a better place. So for me, I take that sometimes when things look like they are falling apart, they're actually falling in place and you have to have faith <laughs> that it, was, it will be well. What I would advise young women who, who aspire to get into leadership is first of all to, 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 be, to, ha to get clarity on what it means to you being a leader. Do you want to be a servant leader? To, you know, to serve others or do you want to be a boss? You, secondly, you need to have good networks of like-minded people where you can be in, in certain uh, groups, communities, associations, clubs, where there are other leaders and you'll be able to be sharing uh, experiences. But most important is to build a good character and to maintain your vision 
and your passion for what you do. Believe in it, live it, do it well. Yeah, I, I somehow everywhere I work, I've always told my, the people that I work with that I believe in being a leader of leaders and not a leader of followers. So everybody, who, wherever you are, you have um, a domain which you are in charge. Whether you are an accountant, whether you are a, a receptionist, whether you are a driver, you have a domain which you have to do. To, to, you are in charge, you have authority, and so you must do your best there. And when people are given you know, that freedom to, to work without uh, people looking over their shoulders, they become more responsible and they will, the whole uh, organization grows, it prospers because everyone is committed and everybody is feeling they have a mandate to take decisions at whatever level they have. And consulting in a way that is uh, adding value and not looking down upon anyone because everyone has something that they can contribute. I have um, in, the, in, in my previous jobs, like I said, I've been doing a lot on entrepreneurship. And um, one of the, the things that I'm really proud of is my initiatives. When I was working in my previous um, employment, we had a big program for agriculture development. And for me, I, I like, uh, I, you know, I'm curious, really, really one of those people with the curiosity, uh, like a fish. So I like to know things, I like to, you know, experience new things, I like to understand why things happen in certain ways and why not. So whenever I go somewhere, whether it's a conference or it's just a visit, even if it's just a holiday, I want to explore uh, and, and, and get to know new things which can, I can apply to my life or to my community or to my family, my association. So in one of the conferences that I attended back way in, I think, 20, 20, 20, 2013 in India, uh, I, I met uh, coconut producers from all over the world in the coconut producing countries. One of the things that challenged me over there was to see how productive that sector was. I knew we had coconuts here in Kenya and we were struggling how to make it productive, how to make farmers who are doing coconut to, you know, to get um, economically stable, how to have industries that are using coconut as raw materials, and it was a struggle here. So when I went there, I learned that there are actually some coconut varieties that are producing 10 times what ours produce. And they had, you know, Kenyan's trees were taking seven to eight years to mature. Those ones, the hybrids were t varieties were taking two years and a half and producing 10 times. And I said, aha, this is gonna happen in Kenya. And so I came, I, I came back here. I had actually gone for that trip. I'd invited some stakeholders in the industry to go along with me because I, when I came back here, I didn't want to come and tell people stories and they are not believing me. So I went with people from the research centers, the, the counties that are producing uh, coconut, uh, the CECs in charge of agriculture. I went with uh, the leaders of the coconut producing uh, uh, societies, the circles, and also uh, the processors of coconut. So when we came back, we formed a working group and we purposed that we are going to rejuvenate that industry. So what we did is we, we started a process of importing those hybrids to Kenya. I didn't know it was going to be such a big mountain, but we climbed it one step at a time. It took us five years. Yeah, five years. So eventually in, um, in 2014, uh, was it 2014? No. In 2017, the, the first consignment arrived in Mombasa. It was quarantined by, by Caro uh, in, um, in their south coast uh, farm for six months. And it was successful. The quarantine was successful. They sprouted, and now they have been transplanted. Right as we speak, they are fruiting. 
So, and now the county government of, of of uh, Kilifi has uh, imported a second consignment. So that, even if now I left that job, I know that that is uh, a legacy and that it is not just going to be for the organization, but for the country, that that industry will never be the same again. It has proven those hybrids are, are, are successful in Kenya. They can grow, they can produce, and they are going to, to transform that sector completely. My highlight um, uh, came without me really seeing, and I think it was back to back. I'll say within a period of a very short time, after working uh, for over maybe 20 years, uh, I eventually became a CEO. I, I didn't see it coming that fast, but it did come, and, and I could attribute it all to my performance that. Uh, I was actually appointed uh, a CEO from my track record. And I successfully did my first term as four years, very successfully. And uh, I came over here and I'm still a CEO where I am right now. And while I was as, at a CEO uh, in my previous employment, I got an opportunity to go to Harvard to study on strategic leadership. Um, one of the lessons I've learned is uh, not to be too trusting. Um, when I've seen that when you trust people so much and people you don't know, they will, there's a high chance that they will betray you, they will sabotage you. Uh, so they are people that are close to us. We, as much as we trust them, we have to keep on verifying. I wish I was told that I could be anything I wanted to be. <laughs> so I could have probably followed my dream from childhood. Yeah, then by then it was more of my father dictating what I should do. <laughs> yeah, so if I had been told that whatever you want to do, if you want to do it, you can achieve it. And that I was worthy of anything. I was worthy of, you know, being loved. I was worthy of being successful. I was worthy of, you know, being accepted. All those things I've learned them when I'm old. But it's not too late because I, I still have time to redeem some of it. Yeah.